the whimsical women of the world. We started out with a Native American, then we did an Indian woman, and then we followed up with a fiery Celtic redhead, and now we're doing this beautiful three-quarter Asian portrait, and we're doing her in a monochromatic color scheme. I really like to teach in black and white because it really drills down the concept of the value scale and incorporating really nice darks and lights so shading and highlights on the faces and it just makes a for a really impactful drawing all right we are not going to speed up too much just a little tiny bit to get back <laughs> to get over my yakking in the video so we're going to just start out with a perfect circle and you're going to be up towards the top of your paper not all the way to the top but most of the way up there she has long hair we're going to try to get it all in and then we're doing this soft v with these two lines that are going to come off right from the sides of the circle but first we're going to pay really close attention to her she's a really beautiful curving jawline right here so we're going to come down first and then kind of swoop into that v shape that i was just talking about and then those two points together to make the chin. As always, pause the video as much as you need to to draw along with me. It's the beauty of YouTube. We can pause as much as we want. Rewind, fast forward. So out of that same side and jaw sweeping down is the back of the neck. It's just real beautiful, graceful, continuous line. So just do your best to start at the left there, swoop down. And there you go. Do not draw this, this ear with me. However, I put it in the wrong place because I didn't draw my guidelines yet. So do not draw the features until you get your guidelines in. This is like super rookie mistake. So do not draw that ear. So we're gonna pop in the, the eye line is halfway through the middle of the circle. The nose line lines up at the bottom of the circle and the mouth is between the bottom of the circle and the bottom of the chin line and those are the three guidelines and then the hor the vertical line is a little bit different the the vertical is really is three quarters of the way around the face and that's what helps line up our features and gives it the three quarter portrait view so in the center of that is the middle eye which obviously isn't really an eye but it's just our placeholder which makes sure our proportions are correct the right eye it goes right to the edge of the circle and then the left eye is lined up on those grid lines i have an awesome cheat sheet for this too let me know if you want it in the comment sections i can drop a link that will allow you to download it and it's just um it's a cheat sheet for the three-quarter portrait view which it creates that same grid that you're looking at right there on my paper. Now the uh, the hair is the same on the three quarter portrait where it comes down into the top of the head and it also has volume that's up and over. So I'm sketching that hairline in now because it helps me figure out if all the other features are lined up correctly. So I'll, right away I realized, duh, my ear is way up in space. The top of the ear should actually go to just reach the eye line. And then it goes down to the nose line. So the ear should sit between the two, which is why I told you not to draw that with me because I was putting it in the wrong place. And if you draw the front facing guidelines, you'll see that all the features match up the same. Just like I said, like the ear sits between the eye line and the nose line. So that should be the same for the three quarter portrait. So again, I'm adding the volume of the hair. I just like to sketch like a quick outline just so I know where I'm going and adjust. That way if I can erase, now is a great time to erase because I haven't gotten too far in. So I usually just put in the loose sketch and notice again, the hair has volume. It goes down into the head circle and it goes up and over and beyond the head circle. So you always do that no matter what view of the face that you're drawing hair always has volume that's larger than the head oval that you're drawing so i'm kind of shoring up the face the jawline there just pressing down a little bit harder with my pencil because i'm feeling a little bit more confident about those lines and again just trying to futz with the hairline make sure the proportions are correct quickly kind of scrubbing in the eyebrows no, i'm not married to anything right now i'm doing a lot of erasing and you can still are at a great place where you can move things around 
Um, and so feel free to move things around. Now, it looks as if her eye line is too, too high. However, you're not seeing the whole back and the volume of the back of the head. So when things are all said and done, especially for this model, her eyes really are higher than when you have an oval and you would drop the eye line down further. So it also has to do with the shape of her face, the model's face, as well as being that in combination with the three-quarter portrait is raising those eyes up higher than you would if you were um, doing someone else. All right, so I'm shoring up the eyes and I'm using the angles that I'm just seeing in the reference photo. So you can follow me since you're not staring at the reference photo yourself. So again, the nose line, we have that little ball for the nose that we drew for our placeholder, which is right on the intersection of the nose line and, and that vertical. And you just follow the nose bump around. And you do see both nostrils in this view. There are some, some three-quarter portraits where that far side of the nose is hidden. And this one, her head is not tilted so extremely. So I'm drawing another oval to give me the shape of that nostril drawing in the nostril, and then I'm just outlining, I call it my parentheses, which is just drawing the outsides of both nostrils. And again, this line I futz with a few times, but you have to start somewhere. Even if it's the wrong place to start, you have to just put something in to get it going. You can always adjust your proportions, erase, you know, futz with things as much as you need to. I'm never, I never am attached to anything at this point. It's sometimes it's just more important to just get things down to get things started. So the top left, she's the most beautiful mouth. It's tiny, but it's also full. So it's, um, it's right below the nose. She's a very well-developed fulcrum, which is the little area between the nose and the mouth. There's a lot of sh shadow that happens in there, which is fun to draw. So it's a very small, and it's very thick. Um, her lips are very full. So it's just important to take your time and make sure you have the roundness that you want to. Um, it's just oh, from week to week, all the features and how different they are. It's just so cool to see all the little differences here and there that you know, you get to play with to make these characters really come to life. So her ovals are very tiny. And again, there's a lot of futzing that happens here because frankly, I'm out of practice. I have actually never drawn, and I'm super embarrassed to admit this, I've never drawn a three-quarter Asian portrait before. So this, I'm in new territory right now and I'm not awesome at it. So there's a lot of erasing. There's a lot of adjusting. I'm take your time and look at your reference or take your time if you're using my drawing as a reference and you're more than welcome to, um, that's what I'm here for, is to make sure things are just going into the right place. Are the eyes, the, the tear ducts still have to match up just like you would on any face. So that's always something to keep in mind. Um, this, there's an angularity to her eyes that I don't see and I'm out of practice with. So that's something that's new. Using a circle template is super handy no matter what person you're drawing for any time you need to draw a perfect circle, but it really helped kind of tuck that in the same, the right place. Her eyebrows start right above her um, tear duct and there's no upper eyelid to draw. So it's just very simple. It's a very simple shape. It's just like a, almost like a diamond with um, a cut off iris in the center. So very, very simplistic. And it's so funny because it's just so subtle. These differences are so subtle and it just lends to the beauty um, the differences between all the models that we're drawing from week to week in the whimsical Women of the World series. Of the World series. It, it, it really is the World series. That's funny. Of drawing. <laughs> so again, I am not going to keep that bottom lid line. It's just sort of sometimes it helps to draw in the shadow lines that I see because it helps me understand if my proportions and the lines that I'm drawing are correct. So again, take as long as you need to erase as many times as you need to. Um, just take your time and really study the feature. That's what I'm doing. And so between each 
you know, attempt, I'm stopping, I'm looking, I'm erasing if I need to make any adjustments. And you see, and that's why I sped this up. It's only sped up twice, but there's so much back and forth and adjusting because I am super out of my element. And I am so grateful for this opportunity to grow and expand my drawing skill set alongside you all. So yeah, it's my privilege to be here with you every single week. And I'm so grateful that you're here learning and growing with me. I still learn something new with every single project that I come up with. I am always a student as much as I am a teacher. So I made some big, really funny mistakes in this one. So I'll, it'll be funny to point them out to you. So I just raised her guidelines. Once I finally had everything in place where I wanted it to, we can graduate and move on to the coloring part. Now I lined up and I swatched out all of my grayscale markers. These are grayscale Copic markers. I'm working on my favorite hammer mill cardstock. And I really made this little shading chart for myself. And I recommend you do this with every project you do, whether you're working in black and white or you're working in color. Make a little value scale for yourself because you can use it as a ruler, almost like a color ruler to determine what shades go where. It's like a little cheat sheet for yourself. I have those in my How to Draw and Find Your Style book as well. I actually do it in that book in um, three different mediums so you can see what that value scale looks like, but it's huge. So I'm using my N2, which is just the super, it's the N series. They have a couple gray scale series of Copics, but this N is neutral, so that's not very, there's a cold set as well, which has a blue tinge to it. So it looks super streaky at first, but it does go away. I have some techniques to help reduce the streakiness, which I'll show you in this video. But the first thing you got to do is you got to just lay down, you got to lay down some color and it feels like her neck is like a giraffe and it goes on for days. So I had to at some point stop and like turn the corner to get a shoulder in there because it was really, really funny how, how, how like forever it was going on. Uh, but this girl is all lean, long and lean. Her nose is long and lean. Her, her whole face is long and lean. Her neck, everything, her hair, um, just gorgeous. So let's dive into some shading. So I'm just going up a tiny bit. So I'm just went from an N2 to an N3. I'm just going up by one shade every time. It's very systematic. And that way it's not scary. We're going really slowly. And as you can see in the shading that I have going on on my girl is the exact shading that's going on on the reference. Okay, so you just are, I'm not making this up. I'm just recording what my eye sees on the reference photo. So anywhere that there's basic shading or a difference in the value, I'm just throwing down the N3 just to get started again. It's nice to ease into these shapes and shadows and just go a little bit at a time. It's super scary at first, but um, with practice, like pretty much everything in life, it just gets easier. You get used to it and you're not, I'm not so scared anymore. And markers are quite a commitment. They're a lot like paint where you can't really, um, Actually, they're worse than paint because you can't really, you can use um, a lot of colored pencils to do some adjusting and I do always do that on top. Um, but even that's sort of an art. So just take your time and follow me. But as you can see, there's a really good overall shot of where you are going with the first shade. All right, so once you have the final, I'm still working with the N3. Once you have all the shading where you want it to go, along the hairline, on the, the far side of the nose and face and under the neck. It's very dramatic shading, which is why I chose this reference because it makes such a striking um, end result. So now I'm, I just went up one little shade again. This is the N4. So just go slow and it pause as many times as you need to. And you can see just ex the exact areas and I'm going inward. As you can see, every time I go into a darker shade, I'm narrowing the space that gets shaded. That way, the transition is a little bit more seamless as it goes from one to the next to the next. And Copic markers or alcohol markers are a lot like watercolors where they go on dark and then they dry lighter. They're kind of similar to that. So just pay close attention to those details I added to the eyes adding just a darker shade and just like with just a touch here and there. And then I went to go switch to my N2. Look at that. Look at that dark spot. I just, I grabbed, I meant to grab the N2 and I grabbed the N6 and I shoved it right in her eyeball. 
I did. I totally just did that. And I was like, oh, snap. And there's nothing I can do. I didn't even hesitate. I was like, that's wrong. And I'm moving on. Just there's just no reason to get upset. Things always kind of work out if you just kind of yeah, kind of got to ignore some of this stuff. I feel like it's a test sometimes. Like, no, I'm not even paying heed to that. It's going to work out or it's not, but I'm moving on with my life. So I just pretended I didn't just do that and I moved on to the hair. Now, the hair is just black and it's really important when you're drawing hair, especially if you're doing like strands, like in essence, this is what I'm doing, that you start from the root every time. So you have to start at the root and go all the way like a brush, like you're brushing your hair from root to tip, from root to tip. That way you don't have any awkward strokes in there. And it's it feels awkward because there's so much space that you have to fill in. And I wasn't sure, to be honest, if this was gonna come out okay or not. But as most things in drawing, which I've realized over years of experience, is that you just keep going. Like just keep going. The worst that can happen is that it doesn't work out. But if you stop, you'll never going to know. So it's totally worth just diving in and just keep moving. All right. So this is one of my techniques for getting rid of some of that streaks. I take the a lighter color than what I've used so far. This could, you know, it could be, it's kind of the same as doing like a colorless blender, but I think it works better if there is a little bit of value in your marker. So this is an N1 and it's super cool that you can see this in time-lapse because you can see the streaks like almost kind of start to disappear and it's like mowing your lawn because you do one direction one week and then the next week you switch direction right and they do that to kind of get the patterns out of the lawn it's the same thing that I'm doing with my markers here so I'm using the N1 which is two shades lighter than my lightest shade and look at that it smooths out the entire phase it also kicks back some of the other shading that I had already done so we're gonna do a little bit more dramatic shading in a minute to help kind of make up for that in the meantime, I'm taking my Copic mark, uh, multi liner, this is a 0.5, and I'm just adding in some details. It's so, these little details on this drawing are so fine. It's almost like scary because there's just, just very few things that you need to be outlining. It's just the, you have to make the eyebrow, we're going to outline the eye, color in the whole iris and pupil black. We need to fill in the nostrils. We're going to put in our little nose parentheses, my favorite. And then we are going to outline the little pouty mouth. And then we are going to kind of just outline the chin and the face. And then we're going to do the other eyebrow. Super careful because it's such like tiny, tiny details. Oh, we did add the ear details as well. Excuse my hand. And I'm adding some fine hair strand details before going ahead and just outlining that left hand eye. Now the lashes are super cool because they're downturned. And I only know this, you can't even see it in the reference, but I actually teach how to do a downturn eyelash Asian eye in my How to Draw and Find Your Style book. So I seen this before like super up close so I knew kind of what was going on from doing that Asian eye study but it's funny because as much as I've done Asian eye studies I haven't done like again this three-quarter portrait I've never done so so cool so this is my Pentel um brush pen pocket brush pen it's my favorite one to use for eyelashes normally um, but it was too big for her eyes so I'm using it to just to make some individual hair strands within her hair and now I'm going in with I believe this is an N4 it's an N5 okay so I went up that's right because I started with N2 and then I went three, four and this is five so this is the darkest shading I've done yet and as you notice I'm ringing it around her nose. It's a little choppy and it's a little rough, but you can use the lighter colors to fix it. That's what I'm using now. I just switched to my N3. So that was like, if you make a mistake, it's nice to fade those away using the lighter marker colors. That's why it's always good to choose like between three and six shades for faces. 
because it gives you a lot of wiggle room when it comes to shading and correcting as well. So the darker shades give you the most drama. The lighter shades give you the most fixing and smoothing and blending abilities when you're working with markers. So I'm going up one more notch. I just jumped up to N6, I believe. So we are getting crazy with the shading, but I just love me some drama. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Look at that. That was a huge oops. I thought I had picked up. I just chopped out a hunk out of her neck. I thought it was an N6. I picked up an N9 and I, yeah, carved out a giant chunk of her neck. So what am I doing? Instant fix mode. Just decided, all right, let's just have some big sweeps of hair coming and covering all of her neck as if I had intended that the whole time, which of course, I totally didn't, but something had to get fixed. So that was like my immediate knee jerk reaction. So you got to roll with these punches, guys, and not let them get the best of you because, oh, they totally will. So now I'm busting out my colored pencils and adding in some individual strands of hair. So this is kind of like a great way to break up the blockiness of the marker. And so... Um, yeah, it's just basically putting in highlights. I think doing a paint pen would be too much. It would look like way too white. And now I'm just using a little bit of black in colored pencil to add in some individual hair strands as well. It also makes it, gives it more texture. So it's like hair texture instead of just like marker. So I was trying to use the white. It didn't work super well because the mark, the gray is actually so light, but I was able to add a little bit of better um, highlighting around that far side eye. And then I end up switching to some marker because markers are always just satisfying and give me the punch that I'm looking for. Um, and there it is. So there's a little highlight on the bottom and then there's just one that sits in the middle. And I just made up that eye shine and I didn't actually love it, but I just pretended that that's what was there. And then I'm adding the highlight onto the nose, which I super like how that worked out. Um, I think it added a lot of extra dimension, threw it in on, on her fulcrum as well as on her lip. And then I'm using the dark gray, which to, to blend out that shading in her cheek because it was a little abrupt. And so the I use color pencils to like help with those transitions. So if like that, it's too much because I went from like N6 to N3. You can use the colored pencils to ease all of that. And you can do the same thing. I'm using white and you can scrub to try to diffuse the look of the streaking on the face from the markers. But I was super happy with the way putting the N1 over the N3 kind of helped really minimize that streaking. Adding the last kick of shading to her lips before we call it a day. The last, last bit, because I noticed her lips really are dark, but the end result I was super happy with and going back and forth between all the different grays and then just using the colored pencils to kind of augment what I had. Of course, ending with the amazing white highlights. You can't go wrong with the white highlights and a paint marker at the end, throwing in a little bit tiny bits of extra shading super happy with how this project turned out all right so very very last last details i'm going to just put a teeny 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 number of little eyelashes down here as well as on this side and also i was able to can kind of correct this mistake a little bit by just, I just tried it and it does work fine. Add a little white colored pencil in here to bring back the neck to its regular proportion. It really actually did the trick quite well. And I'm super pleased with how she turned out with even mistakes at all and, and all I should say, um, of which there were a couple of pretty big boo-boos. Um, that being said, you know, I think all things considered, she, well, I'm happy with her. She has some hair pieces up here. Um, kind of individual strands up here. And I think she's a great addition to the series. And I'm really happy with the way that she turned out. And again, I am taking 
submissions from you. If you want to add your finished piece to the book, please just um, go to karencampbellartist.com and click on get published and that will have all the details of how you can enter and to be featured in my next upcoming book. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you next week.